Hi, this is Alan Gleason. Please subscribe to the ABSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about Mastered for iTunes, a new standard brought in by Apple that affects all audio streamed on iTunes. I feel that what we're going to look at today is important, whether or not you intend to stream your music on iTunes. The reason for this is that new standards have been brought in for digital and streaming services, and no matter what service your music is available on, all these things need to be considered. In days gone by, mastering standards related to the medium that the audio is going to be distributed on, vinyl or CD. These days most people consume their music through some sort of streaming service, whether that's Spotify, iTunes or even SoundCloud or YouTube. Apple brought in the Mastered for iTunes standard as a way to standardize the quality of the streaming audio that they are providing to their customers. The standard that they use is AAC, which is similar to MP3 in that it's a lossy compression, but it offers the potential for higher quality results. As part of the Mastered for iTunes standard, there's a number of tools that are available for free. Apple being Apple, of course, they're available for OS X only. The main tool that we're going to be looking at is this plug-in device here, and what it allows you to do is to monitor the results of your masters and see and hear the sort of results that you'll be getting when they're encoded for iTunes. So when you're sending your music to iTunes for distribution, you don't actually do the encoding. You send them high quality WAV files with a minimum sample rate of 44.1, but they prefer higher and a minimum bit depth or resolution of 24 bit. What this tool allows you to do is view what the results are going to be after the files are encoded. This is important as you want your media to be presented in the highest quality possible. So I've got a mix here that I'm mastering. At the end of my chain, I've got this plugin installed and what it allows me to do is view the encoded information to the iTunes format. So currently iTunes is using an iTunes Plus format, which is for streaming audio at 256 kilobits per second. Previously it was at 128, but they're now using a higher standard. So that's the one we're going to use today. What this area below is showing us is showing our highest sample peak rate and also the intersample peak rate. I'll explain that in a minute. And on the right hand side here, it's showing us the encoded results. So on my master chain, I have my AU device here and I'll just turn off my limiter that I have at the end of the chain and we'll listen to the mix. So immediately I've got clip indicators coming on. And this is telling me the peaks have gone over the sample level by 0.2 and also there's an intersample peak of 0.2 and the encodeds are pretty much the same. When I turn on my limiter, obviously it's going to get a bit louder. I'll just reset these and I'll monitor what happens. So my highest sample peak level is minus 0.2, but I've got intersample peak values over that. Now what intersample peak values are, is that your peak meter within your DAW can be registering something under zero, but when the file is played back through a digital to analog converter, there can be intersample peaks that actually go over zero when the digital file is reconstructed into an audio signal. On the limiter that I'm using, and on a lot of limiters, not the one that comes with live, you have a section here that protects the ISP or intersample peaks. So if I turn that on, when I play back my audio, I'll just reset my clips here. I'm still getting intersample peaks, but it's not as high as it was before. I'll adjust my limiter again. And I'll reset this. So it's using better protection now, and I'm not getting any intersample peaks. And my output of my sample value is not peaking either. So let's go back into my limiter for a second. Currently I have the ceiling set at minus 0.2. I'm just going to bring that down a tiny bit, minus 0.3. I've turned on my intersample peak protection. And set it to precise so I'm not getting any more intersample peaks. When I go back to my AU round trip meter and we play back our audio, even though now we can see after we've adjusted our limiter that we're not getting any intersample peaks, everything is below zero so we have no clipping, which is the main purpose of using this tool. When I play back the audio, I'll just let it play for a second. Everything is looking okay there. But let's say I want to limit it a bit more, get a bit more volume. Let's move these so we can see both of these together. Tweak some of my limiter sounds. Thank you. 
we see what's happening over here now is that in the encoded file that we're going to be creating we've got digital overs or clipping in the audio so even though in the source audio we've got no clipping happening in the encoded file we're going to get clipping now this occurs because as the file has been processed to part of the compression when all the digital calculations are done we're not getting an exact copy of our master file and what can happen through this process is the amplitude can vary slightly giving digital overs so we're not hearing any clipping in the original but in the encoded file there will be clipping so the way around this is to make sure that a master that we're creating is not generating any clipping or overs in the encoded file now this requires a bit of a reduction in the volume or the processing that's been applied in our mastering. So we're backing off on the gain and some of the compression settings that have been applied. We create a more dynamic mix and at the same time we're not going to be getting any digital overs in the encoder file that's been created for iTunes. So as I mentioned at the beginning, even though you might not intend to be delivering your music for distribution on iTunes, using tools like these allow us to monitor any clipping that's going to occur after any encoding is going to be applied. Because most of the files that we hear now that have been streamed on the internet have been encoded in some way. And a lot of the metering tools that come as part of your digital audio workstation, no matter which one you're using, are often not as precise as they should be. So it's useful to have an additional tool such as this to help us produce the cleanest audio that we can. This has been Alan Gleason for ADSR. Please subscribe to the ADSR YouTube channel for further tutorials. <laughs>